from rolling blackouts this winter to winter storms or ice storms, hurricanes next summer, or even if you're looking to power a small workshop or an off-grid cabin, solar generators are a great way to look into doing these things. Today, we're gonna to share with you a little bit about how these things work and also what you might wanna consider before buying one. Stick around. Hey guys, welcome back to our channel, The Purpose Driven Homestead. Our goal in our channel is to help you become a little bit more self-sufficient. It doesn't matter whether you have an apartment or a back patio or a backyard or a back 40. We want to make sure that you're able to prepare and provide for your family to the degree that you can with what you have. Our motto is to do what you can with what you have and then try to learn how to do more. Now you can see over my shoulder on this side, we actually have a grow house going. Now, this is our second generation grow house. If you wanna see how we did our first generation grow house where we grow all of our own greens indoors all winter long, I'm gonna link that up above so that you can see that, uh, that video as well. But today we're gonna to talk a little bit about how do you prepare then on the other side of it. So we're actually running our grow house off of our Blue Eddy. So all of our, we, these two windows provide quite a bit of sunlight during the uh, fall and winter seasons. Uh, but we also use grow house lights. And in order to do that, these are LED lights. We actually power those off of our Blue Eddy this year as well. We're gonna share with you a little bit about our Blue Eddy and how it helps us prepare, not just for our growing plants, but it also helps us prepare in the event of a snowstorm. Now we live in the Midwest and we do get quite a few snowstorms. We get a few ice storms, but mainly it's all snow up in our neck of the woods. I know people, uh, friends of us who, who follow us here on, uh, on some of our channels that live down in Texas, Oklahoma, those are you know, obviously those places are much more prone to ice storms up here. It's more around high wind. We do get quite a bit of wind here up in the Midwest and we also tend to get a lot of snow uh, in compared to some people. So uh, when we get those snowstorms, a lot of times we will have some power outages and just in general, I'm not sure why it is, but where we live, we tend to get a lot of power outages, even just in the summer when there's the sky's blue. Uh, I'm not sure what it is with the power company that we deal with and the area that we live in. All of our neighbors have backup generators. We couldn't afford one of those. Uh, but what we did is we decided to go with a Blue Eddy uh, and that is a solar generator. Uh, now this is a little different than a regular generator. Obviously it doesn't use gas, it uses solar power to charge itself. And I'll share with you a little bit about that in a moment. Now, before we go any further, if you wanna help our mission, please subscribe to our channel. Also click that like button. It really helps us out. It helps the algorithm recognize that this is a video that others may wanna see as well. Plus drop us a comment. We'd love to hear what you're thinking, uh, what you think about this and any experiences that you've had with your own Blue Eddy or other solar generators as well. Now, like I mentioned, there are several solar generators out there. Blue Eddy makes one of them. It's the one we prefer, but there's one that's even bigger than this called a Titan. It's a whole different brand. Um, it's a little bit less available, but it's much more hardcore. It's for people who are gonna go out and power significant winter cabins, things like that. Um, we don't have a Titan. We've never run a Titan or even seen kind of how it's worked, uh, how it works outside of just watching some YouTube videos that might be out there. Uh, so that's another system that's out there. It's just, it was too expensive for us. We had to get something that was a little bit more within our means. And so the Blue Eddy is where we landed. Now there are other smaller ones like Jackery makes some. I even think Yeti makes some as well. And so there's lots of different companies that make these types of solar generators. Uh, but we decided on the Blue Eddy and we'll share a little bit with you about why that is uh, because we did look at others as we were making our decision. Now, before we go too much further, it's probably important to tell you the difference between an off-grid and an on-grid solar setup. Now, we are not experts. I am not a solar guru. I don't install solar systems. So, uh, you know, obviously there are probably some people out there that know more about that. If you do, would love to hear about your experiences in the comments below, but here's what we know about solar and what we've learned. We've essentially been teaching ourselves over the last few years. We've got quite a few solar panels that are outside uh, that we set up ourselves. Now, there is two sets of systems. Now, if you live in places like California and other places that they have uh, solar systems, and a lot of times you'll get discounts or you may even get them installed for free. Now, you may have even seen a commercial before you watch this video about you know, get your solar now. If you live in these states, you may be able to get your solar at no cost for the remainder of the year. And they always change the year, right? Because it seems like they're always trying to sell you on something. But 
I know that there are some ways that you can get solar panels installed in your home, probably at very little to no cost to you, but I'm not sure that you ever own those. I'm not gonna talk about those today. I don't have any experience with them, so I'll leave that to others. If you have experience with those, drop it in the comment. I'd love to hear how your experience has been, what you've seen, what, uh, what kind of pros and cons that you've seen out of as well. But the systems that I'm talking about are where you work with your public utilities in your state, in your town, in your city, uh, and those are installed on your home and then they're tied to the grid. That is a grid tied system. And in that case, you are pumping all of your energy back into the grid, right? So all of the system, all the solar panels, the inverters, everything is designed to be a grid tied system. So your grid tied inverters are pumping electricity back into your home first and or into the grid. So you may buy solar at night when your system's not producing electricity, but during the day, if you live in a sunny place, when you're producing more electricity than your home's making, you're selling that back to the grid and that's offsetting some of the power that you're using at night and on the weekends and when it's cloudy and when it's rainy and those types of things. Now that's one type. The other type is an off-grid solar. Now, when you have an off-grid system, it's not tied to the utility. Right, so you're not sending any of that electricity back to the grid, you're storing it. You're storing it in the form of batteries. Now when you're storing that stuff in the form of batteries, that means that you are saving that power for when you may need it later. So if I were to look at this Blue Eddy right now, it shows that we're making power, making more wattage than we're using right now. So we're storing wattage in the batteries right now for a later time. Now that's important because at night when we're not making any, we're gonna be drawing down on those batteries. On an off -grid, in an off-grid scenario, you are pulling your own weight because you're not relying on the grid for anything. Now you're not beholding to the grid and you're also not using the grid. So let's say you have a huge power outage. If your grid is down, you are down when you're attached to the grid. Now those systems are tied so they pump energy into the grid. When the grid goes down, they have safety measures uh, that are basically island fault protectors. They change that system, they go into a down situation because they, what they don't want you to do is energizing the lines when someone's working on it. At least theoretically, that keeps the linemen safe and allows them to do their job to get the power back up and it, without you pumping energy back into the system that could hurt them, right, if they're working on the system. So when you go down in a grid situation, when your system's tied to the grid, you aren't making any power for your home either because it relies on being attached to the grid and not energizing the grid. Now that has a lot of benefits for a lot of reasons. Both of those work uniquely different and they have benefits for different people. If you're looking to lower your cost, uh, maybe even be completely free, so to speak, when it comes to the energy that you create, getting a grid tied system allows you to do that, right? Because you are selling that power back to the grid, anything that you make. So if you oversize your system, you may be in fact making money, at least a small amount. Now most utility companies will force you to have your system kind of gauged so that they're not paying you a bunch of money. They're going to force you through regulations and through processes that they define. They're going to make you size your system to close to what you use every single month on average so that you were never too much above and you're never much, too much below. Now, if you're just looking not to have an electricity bill, that's a pretty good situation to be in because you're essentially flat. Some months you might pay a little, some months you might get a little back but you're gonna be flat to just making maybe a tiny bit of money, but you're never gonna make very much, and that's designed that way on purpose. So again, if you're a person who simply just wants to make some power so that you don't pay your electricity bill, that's a grid tied situation. You wanna be in that space. If you are a person who wants to be able to have power when the grid goes down, you have to be in an off grid situation. Now, before you ask, you're probably gonna say, well, hold on, couldn't I have both? Maybe I can put a switch in. I don't know what the rules are in your location, but what I can tell you is that in our location, you cannot have a system that is both grid tie and off grid. You can't have a transfer switch in there where you can move back and forth. Because again, what they want is they want the ability to know you're pumping electricity into the grid and you don't have any way to circumvent the process to potentially hurt alignment down the road. And so they don't want you to be able to flip back and forth. So you're gonna have to choose which one it is that you want. In our case, we wanted the flexibility to be able to make power on our own without anyone telling us how to do it or anything about it. So in that case, we've got an off-grid system here. That's what this Blue Eddy is. Now, the same components typically apply to most of the systems. If you wanted to make one of these, you could absolutely do it, right? Now, if you're gonna have an off-grid system, there's a few things that you're gonna need that you wouldn't have to have if you were on a grid system. First and foremost, let's talk about the things that are gonna be consistent, right? So the things that are gonna be consistent across both is you're gonna need solar panels. 
you're going to need a way to generate that electricity to begin with and that starts with your solar panels. Now the next thing you're going to need is you're going to need batteries and that's where this starts to differ from the systems that are grid tied. You don't use batteries in a grid tied situation, you're just going to pump that electricity back into the grid. But in this case you're going to need batteries and you're going to need a significant number of them. Now let's talk batteries for a minute. Now batteries are where you're going to spend all of your money. I mentioned that earlier, that's where the big differentiation pops up. So there is a huge gradient between types of batteries uh, with some at the very high end and some at the very low end. Now let's start with what you're probably familiar with. Any of you that drive a vehicle, you're probably very familiar with, at least in a standard vehicle, uh, a lead acid battery. That's the battery that's gonna be in all your cars and trucks. Uh, there are liquid types, right? So you can go in there, you can fill up with the distilled water, or there are sealed batteries that you would use more in like a marine application in a lot of cases. You may also even see these when you have like a sump pump in your home or something along those lines uh, that's a battery backup. Those are lead acid batteries. That is a very tried and true technology, right? That has been around for a very long time and they work, right? They work very, very well. Unfortunately, they are super heavy. Those things weigh a ton. Um, to get a decent sized battery, and you're gonna look for hundreds of amp hours when you start talking about off-grid type of scenarios, those things weigh a ton. Uh, now you can get ones that are you know, super duper versions that you can buy from solar companies, but if you're gonna use just a standard lead acid battery, these are gonna weigh a lot. And they're only gonna last you say from three to seven years, the typical type. And so they're not a great, they're cheap, in comparison, but they're not a great investment because they don't last very long. And if you're having to constantly touch that system, that's additional money that you're spending over and over and over again. So you need to think that through and do the cost benefit on is a lead acid battery what I want? Now we'll say it has some benefits as well. They are cheaper and also they can handle a pretty wide gradient of temperature. So if you're gonna put your batteries outside in a less controlled environment, Lead acid batteries tend to perform a little better when it comes to the gradient of temperature, a little warmer and a little colder. I mean, think about the engine space uh, in your truck or in your car. It's sitting outside, it gets really cold. It gets as cold as everything outside does, right? So if it's 12 below and your battery works, well, then it clearly works in a 12 below situation. It also works when it's really hot. Now, those temperatures do play into the battery's life, right? So it, it cuts down on the lifetime of your battery and it also, uh, plays a part in how much of a charge it will hold and how, for how long. So there's some differences in there as well. But the lead acid battery is a thing that you can use. Now, after you've got your solar panels and your batteries, you're also gonna need an MPPT charge controller. Now, these are available. You can buy them online. There's a lot of places that you can get them from. Now, that MPPT controller is what's gonna control the charging of your batteries. It's gonna decide an algorithm and it's gonna constantly change the algorithm based off of how much sun is coming in, how much uh, shade is hitting some of your panels. It's gonna constantly adjust that and it's the most efficient one on the market right now to charge those batteries. So it's a charge controller, MPPT. That's the next thing on the list. After your charge controller, you're also gonna need a BMS, which is a battery maintenance system. You're gonna need that to make sure that you keep your batteries balanced. You don't want one battery uh, getting charged more or drawing down more than the other. So that BMS is gonna maintain those batteries so that they keep a constant charge amongst each other. So you're pulling down on them equally and charging them equally. And that's what that BMS does. But in addition, it's also monitoring the health of your batteries to make sure that they're not getting too hot. Uh, a good BMS is gonna have a temperature gauge, at least one, maybe more than one, to tell you the temperature of the batteries so that they don't overheat and explode on you. It's also gonna charge, shut down charging if, if, it, if the battery gets too cold, depending on the type, uh, but you're gonna need uh, that BMS as well. The last thing, and I can't stress this one too much, it's a really important part of it, is you're gonna need an inverter. When you look at solar panels and batteries, these are DC. They, that means direct current. You need AC or alternating current to run all of the appliances in your home. Virtually all of the appliances require AC current from your microwave to your TV, to your curling iron, to your hair dryer, to your tea kettle. Or maybe in an off-grid situation or an emergency situation, you wanna make sure you have something that can run your CPAP machine if you have sleep apnea, or you wanna run a refrigerator or a freezer. Those are all AC. With very few exceptions, unless you go out and intentionally find one and buy it, you don't have DC versions of those things. Those are all AC, that's the standard. So you're gonna need something that's gonna convert the DC current into alternating current, just like you would have in your house. Now, all five of those things together cost a significant amount of money, and you can do it cheaper 
Uh, even then probably you could do here. You could do it cheaper, but you've got to know a little bit about those things. You've got to know how those pair together. Now you're going to need other things as well. You're going to need things like fuses and breakers and stuff like that so you can basically turn things on and off and also prevent an overload in case something is drawing down on the power too much, it gets too hot. You want to have those breakers and or fuses built in so that they blow or trip. So that allows you to keep from having a fire. So there's a lot to keep in mind. You absolutely can do it. Now there are a lot of channels out there that have that type of information out there and I encourage you to go watch those. But in our case, we may build one. I've actually got the equipment outside where we may build one later, but I wanted to have something now that I knew was gonna be high quality. And that's why I went to the Blue Eddy. Now we, we looked long and hard. My wife and I talked about it quite a bit and we decided to go with the Blue Eddy with two extra batteries. This particular model is the AC200 Max. Now they have other models that have just recently come out. I think uh, they have a Kickstarter campaign going right now to push out a new version that's gonna be even fancier. It can actually hook up to four batteries, but it's gonna be pretty, pretty expensive at that point. Uh, we just couldn't quite swallow that. So we went with this version, which uh, is still not inexpensive, but when you start looking at all the things that you get, it is a pretty good price because you don't have to deal with any of the extras and trying to figure out how it all goes together. You can just kind of pick it up, plug it in and let it go. Now, as you start trying to make your decisions around which thing you want to do, one thing you should consider if you're going to build your own, look for lithium iron phosphate batteries. There is a big difference between lithium iron phosphate and say a traditional lead acid battery. Hey guys, I wanted to pause for our video for just a second and say, if you're enjoying it, please give it a thumbs up. That like helps us more than you can imagine because it tells the YouTube algorithm that this is something worthy of playing to others. Also subscribe to our channel. That is the best way to keep up with us, but you have to click on that bell. If you don't click on that bell, you won't see it when we make new videos. And if we drop a new video, we want you to know more about it. So please click on that subscribe button and also click that notification bell so it can tell you when we produce more videos. Finally, guys, if you enjoy the video, there is a link in the description below. It says, buy us a coffee. If you'd like to buy us a coffee and just say, wish us well, we would love to have you on that journey as well. It does help us to do things for our channel, like buy a little camera gear here and there to try to make this a better channel, a better experience for you guys. So please, it's $2. Buy us a cup of coffee. Uh, we'd love to chat with you. Also drop us a note in the comments and let us know if you bought us a coffee because we'd like to thank you personally. Now we talk about batteries, the Blue Eddy actually has a battery built into it as well. And you can expand it up to two more, which I'll show you in a second. And these are lithium iron phosphate batteries. So when I say lithium iron phosphate, these are not light. These still weigh quite a bit, but they are gonna be infinitely lighter than trying to use a lead acid battery for the equivalent amount of watt hours. This has 2,048 watt hours. When you add each one of the other batteries, it takes two additionals, or you can have up to two additionals to expand it. Each one of those, again, adds that same amount. So you can triple the power supplied to this unit uh, via batteries by just adding two additional units, right? So you can get three times as much uh, a length of usage out of it and store three times as much uh, power than you could if you just had the single one alone, right? So this one is one and then you get two more. So you got three of those total. So we've gotten questions from a few people on social media. We talked about this the other day, we posted about it and we got questions from people saying a whole lot of things. But one of the most common questions that we got is how do you power it? Now, this obviously will run off of solar panel and that's what we've got going out there. It will accept a maximum of 900 watts of solar coming into it. Now, don't get confused and think you're just gonna go out there and buy nine 100 watt panels and you're good to go. Sure, that'll work. That supplies 900 watts of solar, but it doesn't really. And I'll tell you why. Those panels are only rated to supply about 70 to 80% max of what they're rated for. The 100 watt panels or a 200 watt panel or a 500 watt panel, that's under ideal conditions in a lab. That's the best that it can get. You're never gonna get that type of wattage out of the panel. You're gonna get maybe 70 to 80% of that and that's it. Now, I don't wanna go too far down the rabbit hole here, but you're gonna lose power in the wiring as well. Now, the higher the voltage that you use, so if you daisy chain several of the panels together, together to get a higher wattage, you're gonna lose less of that in resistance, right? So you're gonna up the voltage and drop the amps uh, for the same wattage. But when you're doing that, however, 
just consider you're still going to lose something in the wiring. The bigger the wiring or the higher the voltage in the same size wiring, the less you're going to lose, but you're still going to have some inefficiency there. So you're going to drop some of your voltage or some of your wattage, I should, should say, there. So then it's going to come in through those wires and it's going to come into your Blue Eddy or into whatever system that you design yourself it's going to lose power in the inverter as well, right? So that inverter is gonna transform that into AC current from DC current, and it's gonna get warm. It's gonna lose power to that transition over. It's inefficient. And so that inefficiency is lost in the way of heat. And so you're never gonna get 900 watts. To put it into perspective, we have 1800 watts of panels out there, and we still don't max out our Blue Eddy from a wattage perspective. So it's winter here right now, and that comes along with a few different things. It comes along with a lower sun in the sky. So when the sun is lower in the sky, it has a less intense uh, strength, right? So that sun's not as strong, so it's not gonna power the panels the same as it would during the summer. Now, if we had those same 1800 watts of panels during the summer, it will probably pump this out. Now, we've only had this for a few months, and so I haven't seen it during the full brunt of the summer to see how much we can get out of it. Plus, I've already moved some panels over to add to that to get it to the 1800 watts. So we've never really experienced what it can do in a summer. But during the winter, you need to oversize your panels so that it can pump in the max amount because you're never going to get that, right? The other thing you have to deal with in the winter is you got to deal with snow. At least where we're at, you're going to have snow. You're going to have a lot of overcast days. You're going to have a lot of days where it's just cloudy. It's, it's sleeting. It's snowing. The snow builds up. So maybe during the day, it's not cloudy, but the sun is out and it's shining on panels that are covered in snow. So you've got to factor some of that in as well. Fact is, our mount outside is a ground mount, so I can get out there and I can use uh, a broom to sweep those off when we need to so that uh, we can make power as much as possible during the winter. So those are things you really need to consider. You need to have a battery source that is big enough that you can weather low sun, no sun, uh, bad weather, those things pile up. Sometimes it may be days before the sun comes back out and you need to figure out a way to account for that. And the way you account for that is you make hay while the sun's shining. Quite literally, you use the most battery that you can get. You really gauge up on the battery sizing. Try to get as much of a battery as you can afford because then that covers you. Then, then you're gonna spend your money on your panels so that you can pump as much power into those panels as well. This thing will accept 900 watts. Uh, so far, we've never maxed that out. So let me show you a little bit about how this thing works and a little bit of the configuration, and then I'll come back and answer a few more of your questions. So you can see right now we're pulling in about 330 watts from solar. This is gonna to continue to go down. It's the afternoon now, so we've reached past our peak time for solar input. And as the sun continues to get lower and lower in the sky, the you know there's a less direct, you wanted to actually hit the solar panels directly on. So that angle matters considerably. And as the we have a fixed set of solar panels outside right now, we don't have a, um, an adjustable angle. So we've got some that are, that are at different angles because we wanted to make sure that as the seasons change, we have the ability to capitalize on different sets of sunlight. But that means that during the fall like this, any of ours that aren't at the optimal angle for the fall sun are going to get less direct sunlight. So this is gonna to continue to go down as the day goes on, uh, but it's still making power for us. Here you can see this section up here where you see the, the little power plug-in that's showing zero watts. That would show if we were plugging it into the wall using either a generator or public utilities to charge the unit. That's an option you can do while you're putting in solar. So right now we're only at 29%. Uh, it's been a cloudy last few days, so this unit has been running and hasn't really had the opportunity to fully charge up. Today we got our first batch of sunlight in in the afternoon, so we're trying to take advantage of that. Uh, but you can see that 29% is just because we've been using it quite a bit. Now here you've got an AC on and a DC on. Uh, this AC on is what you see plugged in over here. This actually runs our TV, uh, our uh, router, and then also... Uh, the items that we use for homeschooling. And so we, we still have, uh, believe it or not, we have a home phone. And so we still have all of our stuff kind of hooked up. That's what's pulling that 52 watts right now. That's just a standby load. Uh, and that's a considerable amount of electricity. If you think about it, you've got 52 watts going, whether this is on or on, off all day long, that 52 watts is always being pulled because of all the units in standby mode. 
the router, the Wi-Fi router. So we've got just a standard cable router that comes in our house. And then we've got a Wi-Fi router so that we can have Wi-Fi in our home as well. Those are both independent pieces and they pull electricity uh, uniquely, right? So they're always pulling wattage because you always have your internet on. Now you could unplug any of these and you would get obviously a significant uh, reduction in the amount of load that's on the system. Uh, but if you increase, if you turn the TV on, uh, we can uh, we can see kind of how that would impact it as well. So you can see that 54 watts right there as it stands. And then if we turn our TV on, you can see this wattage right here. Jumped way up to 328 watts. So you can see that when we're making only 283, so the sun's gone down even more, it's probably gone behind a cloud right now. But as we're making only 283 watts and we're bringing in, or we, excuse me, we're only making 281 watts and we're using 315 watts, we're obviously pulling down the battery now at a greater rate than it's filling up. So that's something you have to consider is what are you going to have on your system and how are you going to use it? And how many days of solar do you have that are available to you? So I'm going to cut this DC on for a moment. And I wanted to point out now that we've got several of these DC outlets that before were off, now they're on. So in here you've got cigarette lighters that you can use a variety of things for. You've got two of those that sit here. Then you've got this uh, 12 volt, 10 amp plug that you can use as well. So you've got a USB-C port that you'd use for charging a cell phone. Then here you've got some regular standard USB ports as well. So I wanted to point out that these are our AC outlets. If you're watching this from outside the United States, this is probably going to look a, little, look a little odd, but this is a standard US outlet. Now, one thing that is unique, however, is if you notice, there's this plug looks slightly different than your standard plugs that you would find in, say, a uh, your wall outlets. And that's because these are actually 20 amp outlets. So these will actually hold a 20 amp plug, which is a little different than a standard plug that you might see uh, for anything that's like a three prong or a two prong, prong plug. This one would be uh, would have one that's straight up and down, then one that's uh, horizontal, and that's a 20 amp plug, and that will plug in here. You can see there's several of them. All these are set up that way, and that allows you to run something that's much more power hungry, something that will allow you to say do like uh, like say a freeze dryer. Our freeze dryer is a large freeze dryer. It requires you to have a 20 amp outlet, and that is what this would handle. So it can it can actually handle that. And then finally over here on the side, this is what you would normally see as like an RV. Plug. So this one is like if you're our, um, if you're boondocking or if you're using this for like van life or a small RV, this is where you'd use that. You can see here it says recreational vehicle use only. So that's the kind of plug you'd use. And it will power most, uh, most RVs that are smaller in size. So this is a pretty, pretty interesting thing here. I also wanted to show you that up here at the top, there are actually two charging stations. So that if you have a cell phone, you can drop your cell phone on here. And you can see that light turned on, it started charging. So these are where you can charge two cell phones uh, in the event that you needed to. That has to have the DC turned on here. So because I turned that DC on earlier, that's what allowed us to do that. So we're gonna turn that back off. Now it's important to note that when you're using these, you don't wanna have this DC on all the time unless you're using it because just energizing this circuit up here, it requires extra power that this unit wouldn't necessarily need to do otherwise. So always turn off your AC or your DC if you're not using the unit, and it'll conserve electricity. So one of the things that I wanted to mention is that this unit actually has a charging system as well that you can plug into a 110 volt outlet. So you can see here, you've got a standard US plug, and if you're in another country, obviously you have a different plug, but you can plug this directly into the wall, and then this goes into the Blue Eddy, and it will charge up to 400 watts uh, to charge the Blue Eddy, and you can actually use that while you're doing solar as well, which I'll show you here in just one second. So you can see here that we're pulling in just under 130 watts now, about 124 watts. That's just coming in from the solar panels. It's actually already dropped from where we were earlier today. Uh, and it's just gonna get lower and lower as the day progresses. So we're not gonna make much up. We're at 30% now. We're a little higher than the 29 uh, from that prior segment. But we need to give this thing a little boost. So we're gonna actually turn this on now. And I wanted to show you, I wanted to show you, here's what it looks like. There's a light right down here that will plug, uh, will turn on when we plug this in in just a second. Now this is probably the, I mean, you don't even hear this thing right now, but the most, probably the loudest part of this is this uh, converter. It is, it is pretty loud. 
and that's mainly because it's got this fan down here that's pumping it out to dissipate the heat so obviously we want that but this thing is pretty loud you now it comes in here and it plugs directly into um, an outlet right here on the Bluetti as soon as I plug that in we'll see this right here I heard that click up so it's pulling about 466 watts uh, so I'm guessing it's maybe 500 watts is actually what it pulls in uh, but it's making up the difference now it's it's pulling in as much as it can and it's complementing with this 122 watts that's still coming in from solar so you know this is uh you know it's it's a nice feature to have let's say you're off grid and you have a generator you can actually use a generator for a while to run this and then run silent all at night uh, so it's a it's a nice feature to have you can get this thing up to 100 percent and it's it'll pump it in now right it'll pump in quite a bit of wattage uh, between the two and let's say you wanted to run this during the day you could plug it in have it ready to go in case there was an emergency and that way you're always fully charged just in the event that you have a blackout or something like that you can keep this thing at 100 percent and one of the other features that i wanted to show you is how these connect now you can see the blue eddy that we have is at the top up there that has this bottom section down here is actually a battery just like you can kind of see here these are batteries as well and i'll tell you more about that in a second but in addition to having the inverter and the BMS and the charge controller and all that kind of stuff built in. It also has a battery built in here as well, which is pretty cool. It's got 2,048 watt hours that are built into that unit by itself. Now you can expand it and you can see these are some heavy duty cables over here. These things are serious. Uh, these will actually connect. You can put two batteries. So you can actually put two batteries on this uh, in, in addition to the battery it has on board and that will give you an expanded amount of hours that you can use your unit. Now these aren't cheap, uh, but at the same time, they're pretty awesome to have because it expands the battery bank tremendously, right? So now this, these expansion packs can be bought separately, right? You can either buy them together, you can buy them separately. Uh, but each one of these battery packs, in addition to the 2,048 watt hours that are in the original unit, you can see these are almost the identical size. Well, it makes sense that those actually are all additional amounts of the exact same uh, volume. So this is the B230. It also has 2,048 watt hours in each one of them. Uh, so this triples the amount of watt hours that these units will hold. This can make a really big difference in how long you can kind of last with some of the normal conveniences maybe that you want to have or even just the necessities uh, like cooking food or something like that in the event of a snowstorm or a hurricane or a blizzard or you know just a rolling blackout which i think some people are obviously experiencing these days as well we've situated it over here you can actually see to the side over here uh, this is our grow house and so we've got it actually set up so it runs all the leds off of our grow house as well so that we don't have to power anything for growing our food over the winter uh, and if you want to see that video you can check that out actually up here in the uh, corner and you can see the video that we have there for where we grew our stuff last year we actually changed the rack out a little bit uh, made some space because of our blue eddy but we actually grow all of our own greens all winter long through a little grow house here in this corner because of the sunlight that we get and so now that we can run into the led lights as well off the blue eddy it's just even better we don't have to worry about uh, constantly pulling that power now one thing i will point out is that you can see here even on the batteries by themselves if you didn't want to use them with the blue eddy obviously you're, in order to get any type of ac input you're going to have to use uh, the blue eddy but if you wanted to take one of the batteries in the event of an emergency, it does have several DC plugs. So you've got a DC USB plug, a, U a USB-C plug, and also a DC uh, car charger, right? So you can have a cigarette lighter uh, attachment there that you can plug in. You can actually use these batteries as standalone. And you can see the, the charge here, what the battery indicator is. Even if you don't have the, LED, uh, the LCD screen from the Blue Eddy, you can see kind of how that's going. And if I were to unplug this, it would show you the state of the charge. Okay, hopefully you're getting a much better idea of how the Blue Eddy works at this point. And I wanted to share a few more answers to your questions. Uh, a couple of people asked me, hey, what can you run off this thing? Now this has a 2200 watt inverter on it. It will max out temporarily for a few seconds at 4,000 watts. So you can get a lot of things. So think about microwaves. They tend to be about 1,000 watts in most homes. So if you have a, a microwave, that's gonna draw about 1,000 watts. So we can run a 1,000 watt microwave. It can run a washer. 
You cannot run a dryer. This is only 110. For a dryer, for an electric dryer, you're going to need 220. Anything that has a double pole in your breaker box, it's going to be a 220 appliance, and those are going to need a different system. Now, Bluetti just came out with a new version of this that you can plug two of these in and they'll create a 220 volt system that you could then use to run something like a dryer. But as it stands right now, this one won't do that, but it will run things like your washing machine. It'll run things like your CPAP machine. It will run your TV. It'll run a lot of things. This is a pure sine wave, by the way. Now, if you go to a place like Harbor Freight, they've got a number of inverters, but you always wanna shoot for something that's pure sine wave. What else can I run on it? You can essentially run anything that's less than 2000 watts continuously. Uh, a lot of my tools out in the garage, they are far less than 2000 watts, but it's gonna be that initial load. So it can take up to about 4000 watts just for a few seconds. If you have a motor that starts, it will handle that in almost all cases. So I've actually seen these things using skill saws and table saws and that kind of stuff, and it does it no problem. I haven't actually tried it on this yet with my table saw, but I have seen others using it. So. Uh, that's good news, right? Will it run your air conditioner? It will run a window air conditioner for a small period of time. So you wanna look at that wattage and how many amps that's pulling and how many watts it's pulling. But most air conditioners, if you get a small air conditioner in a wall unit, uh, it will run one of those. Now it will not run your home air conditioner. It's just not powerful enough for that. Like in our case, our air conditioner, when it turns on and the compressor kicks on, uh, even it, though it's a 22 seer, which is a pretty efficient heat pump air conditioner unit, it still pulls thousands of watts, uh, close to 4,000 watts, I believe, when I saw it last. Uh, so it pulls a lot of electricity to kick on and off. So you're going to want to make sure that if you need something that's going to run a whole house air conditioner or furnace, this isn't going to be it. You're going to need something that's massive to do that. Now, you can run spots, though. It will run a space heater. It will run a small air conditioner for a short period of time. So Consider the things that are important to you. Maybe if it's a grid down situation and it's, you know, let's say you have a power outage and it's a cold night, you can run a space heater, but you don't want to try to heat your house with it. You're going to want to run it in a small room, like an electric space heater, so that you can run that in a small room, keep your family warm, uh, but it's not, going to run, it's not going to warm the house up. It's not going to be able to pull that off, even if you have all the batteries like we do in this setup. In general, I will tell you this Blue Eddy is a beast. It does a great job of being a plug and play version of a solar generator. Now, if you wanna go build one, again, you might be able to find the parts and the components, and if you just like that kind of challenge, you can probably find one and put it together cheaper than you can buy one of these four. But I will say, unless you want to do all that work, this is a great option to have. It will run virtually anything that you need. Now, I showed you this before, but you can see that we have a plug plugged in here. That's what you're gonna to have to do with this. Now, that is a downside to this system. Now, there's a way, and I'm not gonna condone it, I'm not an electrician, and I'm not gonna tell you to go do this because it's probably against code in almost every place uh, in the United States, but there is a way that you can do uh, a plug here. Uh, some people call them a Widowmaker plug, but you can take and plug in the male portion into the Blue Eddy, and you could potentially back feed 110 outlets in your house if you then plug the other end, stripped it down, cut, it, cut the end off, stripped it down, and then built that into your, your panel. I'm not gonna tell you any more about it because I don't want anybody to hurt themselves. I do not recommend that, but I guess in an emergency situation, if you were trying to do something like that, you could take this system, run an extension cord, go back to your panel and back feed the panel, but you would need to make sure it's off and, and disconnected from uh, the main line, right? So you gotta turn the main breaker off. Again, I do not recommend this. Please do not go do that. But in an emergency situation, if it was between life and death, there's a way that you could do that with an extension cord to at least power a few things around the house through the outlets in your home. But again, the best way to do this and the right way to do this is to just plug a power cord in and then run that out and you can split it. You can have one of those splitters and you can like run it into a box that maybe has six outlets in it and then run your refrigerator uh, and run your, your freezer and that kind of stuff, right? Now you're gonna need to bounce those back and forth, which means you won't be able to have your refrigerator on all the time and your freezer on all the time. You won't necessarily be able to run your microwave and your refrigerator and your TV at the same time. You're gonna have to start making some choices because this thing only accepts 900 watts of power. So as long as you have less than 900 watts going out and you have 900 watts coming in, you're gonna keep it topped off, but you're gonna start drawing down on that battery if you start using a bunch of things all at the same time. So just keep that in mind. You're gonna to have to get judicious about what you use with your Blue Eddy or any other solar generator for that matter. 
But when it comes to grid down situations, I will tell you guys, this is a wonderful thing to have. It has already come in handy with our family several times because our power goes off all the time. And so far, our kids haven't even noticed. So when we do homeschool, just the other day we were doing homeschool and our kids were watching a math lesson before they did their own math lesson. And when they were doing that, the power went off. It was daylight so that we didn't have the lights on in the house. They never even knew it had changed, right? They didn't know the power had even gone off because our TV that they were watching their, their uh, lesson on and the internet, right? All of that was still running uh, and, and nobody knew any different. Now that's what we use ours for day in and day out, but we have it close enough that we can then run an extension cord to power our refrigerator or power our freezer if we needed to in a grid down situation. Guys, I hope you have enjoyed this video today. I've enjoyed making it. This thing is a lot of fun. It's got a lot of neat features on it. It will accept a wide range of voltage from solar panels coming in from 12 uh, volts all the way up to like, I think it's 125 volts. It's a big range that it'll accept. So you can daisy chain a number of panels together to get those efficiencies. Uh, it is a fantastic thing to have for your family in a grid down or in a blackout situation. I know a lot of people are worried about rolling blackouts this, uh, this winter. It's a great thing for that as well. And again, if you're trying to keep your family warm for a short period of time, this is the way to go too, because you can run a space heater. Now it's gonna, you're gonna have to get a smaller one, right? It's gotta be below that 2000 Watts, but you can run a space heater or an air conditioner on this. If you're in Florida and it's hurricane season and your power's out for two days, you can run a small air conditioner to keep at least part of your house livable. You can keep your spo things from spoiling in the refrigerator or in the freezer from thawing out. You can keep your family warm in the winter. There's a lot of things that you can do with this. You can keep a cabin going for probably all the time if you have enough solar coming into it. Uh, and then also you can, you can use a workshop, right? If you have an off-grid workshop, this will absolutely work. It'll run most, most any tool except maybe a welder. It wouldn't run a welder, but uh, outside of that, it'll run probably any of the other tools that you're gonna use, hand tools, saws, that kind of stuff. All of those that plug in, it'll do a great job of running. I hope you've enjoyed the video today, guys. I've enjoyed making it. If you've enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. That tells the YouTube algorithms that this is something worthy of playing to others. Also, subscribe to our channel. We'd love to have you come along in our journey. We'd love to have you part of our community and tribe. Just those people who are looking to backyard homestead and to do more with what they have, we would love to come along with you on that journey. We'd love to have you on our journey. Guys, if I've missed anything in the video today, please drop it in the comments below. I try to answer as many of those as I possibly can. And hopefully if there's anything that I have missed, I can jump in there and I can answer it. And if there's enough of it, I'll make another video sharing more with you about what, how we use it and maybe answering some of your other questions that you might have about it as well. In the meantime, guys, have a blessed day and we'll see you next time on the Purpose Driven Homestead. I struggle through deeper waters. I caught on my sisters, my brothers. I've taken so many steps forward.